Yes, come on, yes, come on. Thank you, Amaya. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to CVUUS, the Champlain Valley Unitarian Universalist Society. Welcome to you uh, who are here in the sanctuary, and welcome to also those who are watching today's service online. Welcome. What a beautiful day today is. And haven't we been blessed? with glorious early autumn weather. The past, we had one day of rain and the other days have been beautiful. Today is going to approach 70. If you went out and walked the dog early this morning, it was not anywhere near 70. <laughs> we are at peak here in the valley for another week or so. And then there's that melancholy time when the autumn leaves of red and gold start to fall in earnest and the austere beauty of stick season arrives. I'm Carl Lindholm, today's worship associate, and I'm assist assisting our service leader today, Reverend Christina Solari, one of our two interim ministers, along with Tricia Hart, who will be leading next week's service. Christina will speak to us today about the power of stillness as we pursue the Soul Matters exploration of October's theme of deep listening. It seems an appropriate theme for the season coming up of shorter days and longer nights. This is a good time to adjust your phone if you haven't already. I never object to being reminded because I'm very embarrassed if I do forget. If you're visiting, please sign the guest book in the foyer so we can send you news of activities and events that enrich our time together. If you have a milestone or passage, a yellow card that you would like to share, please place it in the offering basket when it comes around. Also, do stay after the service for snacks and friendly conversation downstairs <clears throat> in the Ann Ross Fellowship Room. This is the Sunday when we celebrate October birthdays, so there's cake downstairs, thanks to Catherine Schloff. Now, uh, Cody, will you help me light the salad chalice? She knows how to do it. She's a veteran. So as Cody lights the flaming chalice, symbolic of Unitarian Universalism, please read along with me these words in your order of service or on the screen. In the spirit of stillness and silence, we light our chalice our flame of hope, in the silence and stillness we hear the call of our own heart. In the silence and stillness 
We are grateful to be together as a community of faith to face the future unafraid. Thank you, Carl. Good morning. I want to say good morning to our virtual folks joining us. How many do we have? Six? Hello. Let's start by taking a few cleansing breaths, which means inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth, and you can sigh if you like. We'll do it three times, and then we'll just sit quiet for a moment. Deep breath. Ah. 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 Our opening words are a poem by Wendell Berry from a timbered choir, the Sabbath poems. I go among trees. I go among trees and sit still. All my stirring becomes quiet around me like circles on water. My tasks lie in their places where I left them, asleep like cattle. Then what is afraid of me comes and lives a while in my sight. What it fears in me leaves me, and the fear of me leaves it. It sings, and I hear its song. After days of labor, mute in my consternations, I hear my song at last, and I sing it. As we sing, the day turns, the trees move. Please, if you will, rise in spirit or body to sing hymn number 145 as tranquil streams. Good morning. It is my pleasure to be doing the Time for All Ages today. And as you might expect, I'm going to sing you all, I'm going to teach you all a song. And I'm asking for a little help. 
Thank you very much. Um, so our theme this month is deep listening, and I was curious, do you think that we can learn anything from animals? Yeah. Can you give an example? Do you have any example? Um, well, you can uh, learn how they think and um, more about the world. Yeah, so I am uh, somebody who loves to listen and observe. I would rather do that than talk. And uh, it's just a great way to learn. And the song that I'm going to teach you is one of my favorites. It's called Dog, Dog, to Dog. And if you could imagine um, maybe somebody your age, you're just playing outside with your dog, and then you notice that um, a moving truck comes next door, and a car, and a dog hops out, and your dog just immediately goes over and starts playing with that dog and they're having a grand old time and you see there's somebody your age and you're about to go over as well and then maybe an adult comes out and says no you can't go over they don't really give a reason but you're like well my dog's over there playing with the dog it's perfectly fine so um that's kind of the the theme of this song if, if our dogs can get along, great. How come we can't play together? <laughs> and so repeat after me, okay? And this is for everybody. Um, dog, dog, da dog, a diggy dog, dog. Dog, dog, a dog, a diggy dog, dog. We're gonna do that four times. And then the words are, if my dog love your dog and your dog love my dog. Try that. If my dog love your dog and your dog love my dog, and my dog love your dog, and your dog love my dog, and my dog love your dog, and your dog love my dog, then why can't we sit under the apple tree? Then why can't we sit under the apple tree? All right, I'm gonna start singing it, and you can just join right in with me, okay? And I have a singer from the school choir, right? Here we go. Dog, dog, da dog, a diggy dog, dog. 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 My dog love your dog, and your dog love my dog, and my dog love your dog, and your dog love my dog. Then why can't we sit under the apple tree? That's it. Now we're gonna do it four times. Each time gets a little faster. If you, want, if you want the mic, you can take the mic, okay? And choir and everyone else, dog, dog, da dog. You can add a little harmony. Dog, dog, da dog, okay? Everybody ready? Here we go. Dog, dog, da dog, a diggy dog, dog. 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 My dog love your dog, and your dog love my dog, and my dog love your dog, and your dog love my dog. Then why can't we sit under the apple tree? Dog, dog, da dog, a diggy dog, dog. 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 My dog love your dog, and your dog love my dog, and my dog love your dog, and your dog love my dog. Then why can't we sit under the apple tree? Dog, dog, da dog, a diggy dog, dog. 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 My dog love your dog, and your dog love my dog and my dog love your dog and your dog love my dog then why can't we sit under the apple tree dog dog da dog a diggy dog 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 my dog love your dog and your dog love my dog and my dog love your dog and your dog love my dog then why can't we Sit under the apple tree. Thank you, Katie. Yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. It was lovely. 
We'll sing our children and their teachers out to this little light of mine. There are many pathways to connection here at CVUUS, activities and events in addition to Sunday services that bring us together as a community. It's always a good idea to read Wednesday's Blast every week to learn of upcoming opportunities. We are excited to host another radical event, uh, radical love event this year on Sunday, November 10th. It's a revised date, so put that in your calendars. And we hope you will join us. We would love to hear your thoughts and ideas from your previous experiences. Radical Love Event was created as to be an inclusive exchange, a space where individuals could donate and be given equal chances to win a wide variety of items, such as musical instruments, culinary items, handmade artisan crafts, and works of art. In addition, the experiential offerings foster bonding in various settings, such as dinners, conversation, and coffee, movie nights, hiking, boating, skiing, and farm tours, along with various teaching experiences. The list goes on. Uh, these experiences are interesting, exciting, creative, and intentional in enriching our congregational life. You'll see around uh, the ch sanctuary and uh, uh, around the, the, the church the, a number of these Radical Exchange Love posters with this crucial date. Next Friday is the last day to submit your offering. Now, on Sunday, October 27th, um, tickets uh, and until November 8th, tickets will be available online or in person, 10 tickets per pledge unit. Online catalog is available at CVUS. Items will be on display in the fellowship hall. And on Sunday, November 10th, the luncheon and raffle winners will take place and be the winners will be announced. Don't forget your financial con con contribution too and give if you can. It's a big event, so it's a lot of fun. Um, now, Tom uh, Morgan, our community minister, has some thoughts to share about his ministry. So you probably noticed a lot of change going on in our community uh, lately. Uh, I want to encourage you to go to News and Opportunities page on our website and catch up with some information and opportunities uh, that are happening in our community uh, that are outside the congregation. Next slide, please. But um, this is the third community ministry moment that we've done, and today I really wanted to kind of highlight just a little bit of the way that we're making a difference. A core value of Unitarian Universalism is interdependence, and a core val a value is equity, the inherent worth of every person, and the refusal to subordinate equally worthy beings' needs to the needs of the privileged or others. A core value is generosity and the sharing not just of our resources, but of our presence. So Unitarian Universalist Community Ministry demonstrates and represents our values by showing up in people's lives. Sometimes with fanfare, 
and other times more quietly. We make a difference not from just our individualistic interest, but our transcendent values. In the past few weeks, the community ministry has been part of lives ranging from an undocumented pregnant mom, a 12-year-old troubled boy, a single mom of four working two jobs and about to be kicked out of their motel shelter, an unhoused black man, and more. Lives are about moments and connection and being there. And this community ministry is showing up in the seams, not just to fill what social services or family or friends can't provide, but also to try to reinstill a sense of dignity, a sense of worth and value. A gas card to help a husband get his wife to a, de to a, to a dentist appointment across the state. A box of clothes for kids that are going faster than a mom's budget. Helping to pay a light bill. Maybe helping to buy a child's birthday present because there isn't any money to do that. Providing some relief and sometimes maybe the space to experience something other than constant crisis. Because people, beloved community, can't happen as long as members of the community are in constant crisis. Next slide, please. And then we take that embodied experience, that contextual witness of beloveds creating their communities and our community, and we stand up for justice to create systems that work for everyone. In the coming months, the community ministry will be joining with others of faith to bring about legislation necessary to implement a vision, a strategy to end homelessness in Vermont. Did you know there was such a strategy last year? in the form of house resolutions? Come find me if you'd like to know more about what happened to that effort. The spoiler alert is that very few voters mobilized to support them. <clears throat> CVUS is the Addison County representative for the Vermont Interfaith Action Network. And if you would like to be part of the faith-centric system of change around affordable housing and homelessness, anti-hate and inclusion, climate change, corrections reform, or racial justice, we need your voice. So across a spectrum, from ministering to people in their individual lives, to an orchestrated, sustained advocacy, Unitarian Universalist community ministry makes a difference in people's lives. Thank you for being an instrumental part of that change. Thank you, Tom. Now is the time for our offering. Uh, each month we share our plate with an organization or entity doing good in our community or the larger world. The donor this month is the Vermont Abnaki Artists Association. Please be as generous as you can.
So this is a very um, special time in our service where we share milestones and passages. So a number of you have written them on the cards, and I'll be reading the cards. I'm going to share one first that I received um, from Reverend Barnaby. Uh, Reverend Barnaby Fader is our former minister, if you don't know who he is, um, of this congregation. And he is being treated for lymphoma. Um, he celebrated the halfway mark of chemo at UVM on Friday, and he's feeling very good and very fortunate that the effects of his last chemo round should be wearing off before Christmas Eve when he will be in St. Johnsbury, which he is there today, actually, leading the traditional Christmas Eve service for the small UU congregation he serves there. The chemo has wiped out the tumor on his spine, which was causing him a lot of pain, and the rest of the chemo may wipe out the rest of the lymphoma. So he is so excited about that, and he's also excited that he will be, will be traveling to Oxford, England, right around his 75th birthday in February to meet his new grandson, Ailey, for the first time. He says he is awash in good fortune and grateful for the love and support he has received from this community. Okay, this one's from Becky Strum. My grandson Nicholas Charles Perez Strum was born this Tuesday in LA, California. All are doing well. This is my first grandchild, and I am thrilled and excited to meet him in November. Yay. Andrea Sandbrook, ooh, this is long, small. Almost a year ago, I entered this sanctuary for the first time to attend a Shabbat for ceasefire. I felt overwhelmed at the horror unfolding for the people of Palestine. This space and the people in it helped me hold both hope and sorrow in the same breath. And this past year, as a UU, has strengthened my resolve to take action and be bold in the face of fear. Yesterday, I attended the Vermont Coalition for Palestinian Liberation in Burlington. I learned more deeply how liberation for anyone is connected to liber anyone is connected for to liberation for everyone. I felt a collective sense of being in the service of others, just like here at CVUS. And in conversations I shared about my we connection and its relevance to anti-racism and liberation. I, I encourage you to join SURGE, which means standing up for racial justice, as one way to get involved. There is a honk for ceasefire at the town green every Thursday, 4 to 4.30 p.m. They have signs and we'll welcome you. Thank you, Andrea. Another one for Andrea. D. Carroll. Who's not here? Is she on Zoom? Is celebrating her 90th birthday today. Andrea says she is a dynamic member of the CVS congregation. She shares her lovely voice in choir and her deep listening and friendship. Soon she'll be on site again as the COVID in her community declines. Happy birthday, Dee. And she is on Zoom with us. This is from Johanna, who's our minister emeritus. Ralph Perry, 93-year-old member at the First Universalist Church of Auburn, Maine Unitarian Universalist, died last week at home, and he, has, he and Mary Louise created a nurse something at Orris Island. What is that? Okay. Ralph owned the... Oh, I can't read that. Something at Hannaford's. 
he was generous in every way possible. My heart is in... Ah, I can't read this, but pain. Okay, okay. Thank you. The congregation um, that he's in is, celebra is, is his celebration of life is today. Yeah. I served that congregation for years This is from Lise Anderson. Deep thank you to everyone who contributed yesterday to create a welcoming space for the Mexican consulate and over two hundred Mexican residents of Vermont. Wow. It was a great day. Wow, it's a lot of um, positive, hopeful news. All right, it's time to be quiet now. Except for me. All right, so we're going to have two minutes of silence. So I I invite you to prepare for that silence by sitting up tall and crossing your limbs, lowering your eyelids, and maybe tuning into your breath, or your heartbeat. And before we go into the silence, I offer these words of Chris McCombs from his book, Beloved. Go deeper. Past thought into silence. Past silence into stillness. Deeper still, past stillness into the heart. Now, let the love consume whatever is left of you. If I would be permitted, I actually, Johanna uh, was a, Ralph Perry and his wife were very close friends of my family. He was a very generous benefactor of Bates College 
and a really wonderful man. I taught his son in my first teaching job. Uh, he lived a long time, and he, uh, he did a lot of good work, as a, even as a captain of industry. The reading today is In Silence by Catholic monk and mystic Thomas Merton. Be still. Listen to the stones of the wall. Be silent. They try to speak your name. Listen to the living walls. Who are you? Who are you? Whose silence are you? Who, be quiet, are you as these stones are quiet? Do not think of what you are still less of what you may one day be. Rather be what you are, but who? Be the unthinkable one you do not know. Oh, be still, while you are still alive, and all things live around you, speaking, I do not hear, to your own being, speaking by the unknown that is in you and in themselves. I will try like them to be my own silence, and this is difficult. The whole world is secretly on fire. The stones burn. Even the stones, they burn me. How can a man be still or listen to all things burning? How can he dare to sit with them when all their silence is on fire? I invite us to remain seated as we sing number 352, Find a Stillness. Find a stillness, hold the stillness, let the stillness carry me. Stillness is liberation from storm or disturbance. Do you experience stillness? Where? When? How? 
Stillness, in some sense, is the absence of movement and sound, like a very calm sea. But the elements and creatures do not experience absolute stillness. The Earth is in constant motion in our solar system. The arising and decaying of nature is a cacophony of movement and music. Even as we sit still here and now, our breath, the beating of our heart, the movement of fluids, and our nervous system is in constant flow. And of course, the mind has its endless flow of thoughts. But movement and sound can create stillness. After I practice yoga, or listen to the beat of my drum, or walk in the woods, it's easier for me to drop into stillness. What about you? What helps you drop into stillness? Stillness is naturally present in the heart of every one of us, equally so. Many religious traditions speak of stillness as a way into the holy. Stillness is God, said Yogananda. The Quran speaks of Sakina, the spirit of tranquility, or the peace of reassurance. The Tao Te Ching says, be still, stillness reveals the secrets of eternity. Psalm 46 in the Hebrew Bible states, be still, and know that I am God. Jesus, before his first sermon in Luke 4, spends 40 days in prayer and in silence. And his ministry bursts forward with words of liberation that deeply penetrate and disturb the hearts of his hearers. This prophetic Silence is the bold act of surrendering our words, listening for spirit, feeling our authentic self, and then infusing our words and actions with prophetic power to transform ourselves and the world. As some of you know, I was in Montgomery, Alabama this week at a transitional ministry training with a small group of ministers. We visited civil rights landmarks and museums, and we spent some time in the Dexter Parsonage, where Reverend Martin Luther King lived with his family. Crowded in the small, original kitchen, we were told by our tour guide that in late January 1956, the young king could not sleep. So we went to the kitchen to make coffee, and he prayed, asking God whether or not he should continue his work in the successful Montgomery bus boycott. Because earlier that day, he was told by local segregationists that if he did not leave the parsonage in three days, it would be bombed. His wife and two small children were soundly sleeping in the bedroom nearby. He was frightened for his family and confused as what to do. In the silence of the stillness of that kitchen, he heard an inner voice, which he interpreted as God, saying, Martin Luther, 
Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for justice. Stand up for truth. And lo, I will be with you. King stayed in the parsonage. He stayed on his journey. And it was bombed three days later. Meister Eckhart said that nothing in the universe resembles God so much as silence. Silence is a doorway into stillness. We may think our words are more important than our silence, and sometimes they are, especially when we need to say no, create a boundary, speak about injustice, or tell someone we love them. But so many of our words are unnecessary. Our opinions, our judgments, our boasting, our gossip, our complaining, and more. Our Western culture has hijacked the mystery of being, and to the postmodern mind, silence is terror. Some of our cultural beliefs and norms are obstacles to stillness. The increased need to be busy, to get things done, to accomplish something. The belief that we are wasting time if we just do nothing. The desire to be distracted by our phones, addictions, the news, and more are all obstacles to stillness. We hurry around and busy ourselves looking for peace and contentment when it is right here in our hearts. Like our choice to be joyful or kind, stillness is a choice. Yet, choosing stillness can be challenging because it may reveal the yucky or unpleasant parts of ourselves. Like looking into a compost bucket when it's full and pungent, seeing the unwanted and inedible scraps of food. When we are still, truly present with ourselves, we face our own messy garbage. In the stillness, in the silence, I ask, what is in your compost bucket? What are you afraid of? What will stillness bring? Perhaps we are simply afraid of being alone with who we are. We may become uncomfortable in silence because all the real feelings that we suppress sit there, lurking in the silence. And we may find sorrow or grief, fear or anger. But as we kindly confront the messy space within, allow ourselves to really feel, without even the need to name it or understand it or know where it came from, our personal garbage becomes usable, fertile compost ready to sprout seeds of peace and joy. We then become our own alchemists, our own healers, Let's move a little deeper into stillness. In the stillness and the silence that follows, I ask, what lives beneath the stillness of our hearts? Can we drop into the grief, the sadness, the fear?
Can we go deeper? Can we invite the power, the loving kindness, the interconnection of the collective heart in the stillness? Can we experience the truth of who we are in these precious moments? That each of us is whole and holy in our brokenness. That each of us matters. Can we go even deeper into our hearts with our breaths and access the peace, the joy, the love? It may be helpful to make stillness dates with ourselves, even put them on our calendar, make them just as important as a doctor's appointment or a church meeting. And we don't need to meditate if meditation isn't our thing we can sit quietly with a cup of tea, be with nature, or simply look out the window at sky or tree. There wasn't a lot of time for stillness in Montgomery. It was intense. We spent one whole day at the Legacy Museum from enslavement to incarceration, a narrative museum created by the Equal Justice Institute. Has anyone been there? Wow. When I was there, I was thinking of taking you all there on a field trip. So my journey home from Montgomery was frazzled and complicated, and I'm not going to get into the details, but lurking in my heart was this pain and grief that I was carrying because of what I witnessed there. So yesterday when I was driving from the Albany Airport to Westport, New York, where I stay when I'm here, I ran out of gas on the highway. Okay. I called AAA. They said it would take over an hour and a half for someone to get to me. I wasn't happy. I was tired and irritable. And <laughs> so I'm sitting in my truck on the highway. I'm looking out at the golden, beautiful fall, listening to the cars 
whiz by, and I realized that I had conspired with the universe to create the stillness that I needed. So I just sat there reflecting on my trip, and the anguish rose to the surface, the horrors of what has been and still is being done to people of color and so many other people. The anger at white people for their actions and their ignorance and the heartbreak that our nation has not yet fully acknowledged the many atrocities that we have committed and still commit. I cried and I cried until I found hope and love and the strength to keep going. Mary Hunt, co-founder and co-director of WATER, Women's Alliance for Theology, Ethics, and Ritual, writes in her article, The Power of Silence in the Work of Justice. Quote, silence is not for the timid. It is not an ally of inaction. Silence is a source of power, insight, and perspective. Silence fine-tunes and enhances insights it helps to make spirit and not ego primary. Silence is not easy, but it is essential to the process of doing justice insofar as it provides the justice seeker with a trustworthy anchor, some protection in the very choppy waters of daily life. Our personal practice of stillness can be an anchor to prepare us to deeply listen, not only to our inner voice and the voice of spirit, but to the voices of the marginalized and oppressed so we understand their needs, their struggles, so we can stay curious and not only heard, hear what is on the surface, but what is underneath then perhaps we won't fall into passive silence, which speaks louder than words and live our lives in a bubble or aligned with the status quo. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends, said Dr. King. So perhaps our regular time in silence and stillness will give rise to courage and clarity to know when we cannot remain silent, when we need to speak truth to power on behalf of another. Because the conspicuous silence and lack of empathy shown by some amidst all the injustices in our communities is actually silence that is violent. So, my dear congregation, can we dare to be still while we are still alive? Can we find liberation through practices of stillness and silence? Can we be our own silence when the whole world is on fire? Can we, in the silence, listen to the unheard voices? Can we, in the stillness, find the courage to speak our truth, speak out on behalf of others and our planet? Stillness and silence and deep listening will surely break our hearts open but it may be the key to co-creating a world where healing and love, peace and freedom are not only possible, but inevitable. Amen. And blessed be.
I invite you to share the words which are on your screen as Carl extinguishes our chalice. We extinguish this flame, remembering always to keep love at the center. Our closing words. It's okay, you can get up there. Go ahead, go, go. Are from William Shakespeare, from The Merchant of Venice. How sweet the moonlight sleeps upon this bank. Here we will sit and let the sounds of music creep in our ears. Soft stillness and the night become touches of sweet harmony. Thank you all for showing up today. Have a beautiful day. It's, it is a beautiful day. And don't forget to go downstairs and have some treats and birthday cake. And um, see you next time. <laughs>